Hello and welcome back to my newest SQL Server Quickie. Today I want to talk about a very interesting and important concept in SQL Server, statistics. The statistics tells the query optimizer how many rows are expected for a specific query. And based on this information, the query optimizer will then compile a physical execution plan, which then gets executed. To get a good enough execution plan for your query, it is also very important that your statistics are up to date. If they are out of date, the query optimizer has no good idea of how many rows to expect for a query and will produce a suboptimal execution plan. Now let's switch over to the flip chart where I want to describe what statistics look like and how they are used in SQL Server. I want to show you now on the flip chart how the query optimizer uses statistics to get an estimation how many rows are returned for a specific query. Imagine we have a simple query. We select some data from a table T, maybe a customer's table, and we restrict on a column C, like country, and we say we just want to have our customers from UK. When you have on that search predicate a non-clustered index defined, then SQL Server also creates you in the background a statistics object, and the statistics object describes in a so-called histogram the data distribution in the first leading column of that index. So in our case, when we create that non-clustered index on a column country, we get that histogram, and that histogram describes how many records, how many customers we have in every country. So we have Austria, AT, then we have maybe Belgium, we have France, we have let's say UK and we have another com country that starts with Z. And for every step that we have here, SQL Server describes how many rows we are expecting. So for example, in Austria, you maybe have 100 customers, in Belgium, you have 150, in France, you have 80, in UK, let's say we have 60 and in that other country we have 40 means in our case when we restrict on UK we have here an estimation of 60 rows and that and on based on that estimation the query optimizer compiles you the physical execution plan which gets finally executed Let's switch now over to SQL Server Management Studio and I want to show you within SQL Server Management Studio when SQL Server will update those statistics objects for us and what will happen in the meantime when the query optimizer deals with inaccurate statistics. In the first step of this demonstration, I create a new simple table and insert 1,500 records into it. When we have a look at the table data, we can see that we have an even data distribution in the second column. Every column value just occurs once, 1,500 of them. And in the next step, I create a simple non-clustered index on that second column. And finally, I execute a select statement against this table and restrict on the column value 2. This value just occurs once in that table, therefore the query optimizer has chosen a non-clustered index seek operation together with a bookmark lookup. When you look at the tooltip window of the operator in the execution plan, you can also see that you have an estimation of just one row. Everything is fine and that query produced just three logical reads. Now we have a table with 1,500 rows in front of us. 
SQL Server will auto-update our statistics when 20% plus 500 rows have changed. In our case, we need 300 plus 500 data changes, a total of 800 changes. Now I'm fooling SQL Server by just inserting 799 rows. But this time I insert the value 2 799 times into the second column. We are changing the data distribution in that column, but the query optimizer has no idea about that because at this point the statistics are out of date. Therefore, when we now execute our query again, the old cached execution plan is just blindly reused. But this time we get 800 rows from the non-clustered index and therefore we also have to perform the bookmark lookup 800 times. And this will introduce a serious performance problem. When you look again at the tooltip window, you can see that SQL Server still estimates just one row. But in reality, we get back 800 rows. And this query now produces 806 logical reads. When we scan the complete table with a table scan operator, it only costs us five logical reads. That's the problem with inaccurate statistics. SQL Server has no idea about the changed data and just blindly reuses a cached execution plan. Now let's insert one additional row into the table. This means that we have now crossed the threshold of 800 data changes. When we execute our query again, SQL Server will auto-update the statistics and this will also trigger a recompilation of the cached execution plan. When we look at the execution plan now, we can see that this time the query optimizer has chosen a table scan operator. The table scan makes sense because now it estimates 800 rows. Therefore, the query is not selective anymore and the tables can simply perform better than a non clustered index seek in combination with a bookmark lookup operator. And now the query produces only five logical reads. Statistics are the most important concept in SQL Server. Without accurate statistics, the query optimizer has no idea how many rows to expect for a specific query. And therefore, the execution plan that is produced will be also suboptimal and can give you performance problems. As you have seen throughout the SQL Server Quickie, it is very easy to get out of state statistics because by default SQL Server only updates the statistics if 20% plus 500 rows have changed. Bear that in mind the next time when you are working with larger tables or when you might have performance related problems. Always check your statistics as, as the first step. I hope that you have enjoyed the SQL Server Quickie and I'm already looking forward to welcoming you again next month. Thanks for watching and see you soon.